Because you're worthy of all the glory. In heaven, I praise today, oh God, because we're going to give it to you. Why? Because you've seen us through. Why? Because you made a way out of no way. And for this, we tell you thank you. For this, we give you glory because you deserve it. You deserve the glory. Hey, you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. So, Father, we ask that you bless this service. Father, we ask that you give us your glory today. Sit on us today, God. Dwell in this place. Come here and stay here, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And we'll give you glory. And we'll give you glory. We'll give you glory. We won't have to be propped up today. We won't have to be brought up today. Because you're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the honor. You're worthy of the praise. We give you glory. Help somebody cry out. What must I do to be saved? Save today, oh God. Set free today, oh God. Deliver today, oh God. Whatever the saints of God stand in need of, touch, heal, and deliver. All of the unspoken requests, all of the things we can't speak about, all of the things that we can't say, heal us and help us. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And on this week, if we did anything that was not like you, forgive us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, forgive us hey, for everything that we've done that was not like you. Forgive us, oh God. We're standing in need of forgiveness. Every thought, every deed, every act, everything that we said that was not like you. Forgive us, oh God. And receive our worship. And receive our praise. Because we owe it. We owe you today, oh God. We owe you today. So receive our worship. Receive it, oh God. Everybody under the sound of my voice. Touch it from the crown of their head, God. Down to the soul. Everything that they stand in need of, God. Give them the victory in it this week. Oh, we need your victory. Oh, we need your power. Send your power now, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Send your power. Send your anointing. And we'll forever give you glory. We'll forever give you praise. We'll forever give you honor. Now, saints of God, open your mouth. Open your mouth, saints of God. We don't need a thousand people to bless him. The Bible says when there's two or three gathered in his name, he shall be in the midst. And we want the Lord to come see about us today. Saints of God don't have to be proud of today. But you ought to go right in giving them glory. You ought to go right in giving them honor. Because we owe him just that much. Come on, saints of God, we got a few more minutes. Open your mouth and bless him. Come on, open your mouth and bless him. Come on, saints, open your mouth and bless him. Hallelujah, he's been good. 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 God bless you and praise the Lord to everybody. Don't you feel the presence of the Lord in this place? Come on, lift your hands all over the room, even those who are watching. And let's begin to give God praise. I don't know about you, but I feel the fire of God in the room. Come on, how many brought the Lord with you today? I say, how many brought the fire of God with you today? Come on, we just come to love on him. And we come to love on him and to bless him and to worship him. It is our obligation and opportunity to give him everything that we have. 
So we give ourselves away. We love him. Come on, let's lift our hands and let's begin to put something sweet on our lips and let's fill the room with worship. Come on here. Come on, all believers, if you have a relationship, this is your opportunity, this is your time. Come on. Whoa. Come on, lift your hands and wave from side to side. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I get a witness? I lift my hand right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what we come to do. Oh, you ain't, you ain't control of our problem. Every situation, come on. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah.
sanctuary and let's give God what's due unto him come on lift your hands and let's open your mouths and let's give God the glory I owe him I owe him I owe him come on take the next one minute to give him glory hey thank you Jesus I said take the next minute to give him glory hey glory to God Come on, I owe him. If you owe him, this is your opportunity to show him how much you owe him. I said, if you owe him, this is your opportunity to show him how much you owe him. Glory! Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Come on, let's lift our hands. We got 30 more seconds. We got 30 more seconds. We got 30 more seconds. This is your time. Come on, give it glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give it glory. You're worthy. You're worthy, Jesus. You are. opportunity y'all to give him glory he didn't have to do it he didn't have to do it he did not have to do it he did not have to do it but I'm so glad that he did I'm so glad that he did hallelujah I'm so glad that he did you're so worthy so many didn't make it y'all so many people didn't make it, but you're sitting here with the activity of your limbs. You're able to lift your hands. You're able to open your mouth. You're able to walk up the steps. You're able to give him glory. So while you're able, why don't you give it to him? While you're able, why don't you give him the glory? While you're able. You're able to give it to him, so why don't you do it? You're able to walk. You're able to talk. You're able to open up your mouth. So many people can't do what we do. But thanks be unto God, who gives us the victory. Because God is the greatest power. Because God is the greatest power. We shall never be defeated. No, 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 no. We 
serve an undefeated God, y'all. He never lost the battle. He's never lost. Hey, we serve a God who never fails. We serve a God who never leaves us. We serve a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Look at your neighbor and say, he's able. He's able. Why don't you put him being able on your situation? Why don't you put him being able on your circumstance? And somebody ran back and said, he's able. He's able. Whatever you need is able to go on. I said you ought to thank God that he's able. Even if he doesn't do another thing, he's able to do it. Even if he doesn't do another thing, he's able. I feel the Holy Ghost. I said he's able. To do exceeding abundant above all. Woo. Do y'all know how powerful that scripture is? He's able to do exceeding abundant above all. This is my favorite part. We can ever ask or think. He's a God that goes above our imagination. He's a God that goes above whatever we can ask him to do. Can you imagine asking God for one thing and he does better than what we ask for? That's the kind of God that I serve. If you glad that you serve that kind of God, why don't you lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus, for going above my imagination. And in this next season, let's out. Hey, I feel the Holy Ghost. I said in this next season, I declare whoever is under the sound of my voice that in this next season, he takes it from your thoughts into your hands and he puts it from your hands into your feet. Y'all didn't hear me. I said in this next season, he takes it from your thoughts and he put it in your hands. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, it's in my hands. Church me. It's in my hands. It's in my hands. Look at your neighbor say it's in my hands. Hallelujah. We're moving. Can we stand all over the sanctuary and give God praise for our pastor? Come on, the founder and the visionary and the angel of this great church. Come on, y'all can do better than that. So we love you. We thank God for you. Can you clap your hands for our associate pastor, Pastor Brown, in her absence? Amen. Can you clap your hands for the clerical and the ministerial staff of Kingdom Deliverance Tabernacle? And now can you clap your hands for the King of Kings? Come on. Y'all should do better than that. When I say King of Kings, there should be nobody sitting down. When I say King of Kings, it should be all hands lifted. When I say king of kings, it should be all hands on deck. Because every time I need him, he don't sit down on my circumstance. Every time I need him, he moves every time I need him. And for this, we give him glory. And for this, we give him honor. Amen. While you're standing, we ask that you prepare your offerings at this time. And we ask that as you give, you cheerfully give. And you give with expectancy, amen? Somebody say, I'm sowing with expectancy that the Lord will return it a hundredfold. 
we thank God that all our needs are met. I said we thank God that all our needs are met in this season. And we're expecting God to continue to meet our needs. And if you're expecting God to continue to meet your needs, you ought to challenge your seed today. I said you ought to challenge your seed today. Put your seed to your need. Amen. I said put your seed to whatever your need is. Amen. I'm sowing $50. Anybody who can and will, please follow me. For our virtual viewers, welcome. We thank God for you, you and you. And we pray that this service has been and will be a blessing to you. If you can do me a favor while you're sowing, can you pull out your phones and share the live so somebody may hear and see what the Lord is doing in the tabernacle. Amen. Again, I'm sowing $50. If you can follow me with that $50 seed. Let your need meet your seed. Let your seed meet your need. Whatever your need is. We ask that you sow in that need. If this is your week to tithe, please, please, ma'am, please, sir, tithe. Because tithing is not for us. But tithing, your 10% is for you. Amen. I said tithing is not for us. Tithing is personal. Say my tithe is personal. Amen. And whatever you need God to do in your life, financially and according to your faith, I'm sure that the Lord will do it. Standing all over the building. We love the Lord today. Amen. To my left is going to be our sister, Sister Kethia, that will be taking anything electronic. And we're also asking, can we get in the habit, if you're giving through Cash App or Giveify or Needs of Giving, can you still come touch the basket as a sign of agreement? Amen. Can you come touch the basket as a sign of agreement and a sign that you are giving? Amen. Again, our ways to give. Through Cash App is Kingdom DT19, Givelify Kingdom Deliverance Tabernacle. Amen. If you're giving through cash to my right, our sister Des, you can come from wherever you are. You can come from wherever you are. I sold my seat. You can come from wherever you are. Let me touch the basket. Come on, if you know it, sing it. Come on, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Come in the world. Give me Jesus. Come on, baby. Everybody giving our virtual viewers again. The way to electronically give is through Cash App, Kingdom DT19, and the way through give through Giver Fly is Kingdom Deliverance Tabernacle. Thank you, virtual viewers, for your giving. We love you, and we thank you for tuning in. And welcome. At this time, we're going to have the announcements coming from our own Elder Eddie. Clap your hands as he comes. Come on, put your hands together for giving. <laughs> Take me back to my choir days. Listen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Are y'all joining yourself in the house of the Lord on today? Amen. Certainly, certainly, it is good to see, amen, everybody back in the house of the Lord once again. Amen. So we can come in fellowship with our sisters and brothers in Christ. Amen. Certainly, we want to thank God for bringing Kendra back to the house of the Lord. 
Yes. God brought us through. Amen. T H U. Amen. That's what the mothers used to say. God brought us through. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So we thank God for being faithful. Amen to her. Amen. Thank you. Yes, yes. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Y'all, please, please, because some of us is working on a short fuse. <laughs> we thank God for it. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Moses. Please, please. Listen, they, they play entirely too much and too much. Yeah, yeah, God bought a food. Uh-huh, God bought a food. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else he brought food? Ah. They used to say the muck and the mire. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Listen, we are excited, we are excited to be back in the house of the Lord. We just have, amen, a few announcements and we're going to let you, just a few, just a few, just a few, just a few, few announcements, amen. Certainly we thank God for all of our virtual viewers, amen, that are tuning in with us on today, amen, and hit that like button and hit that share button and leave us a comment, amen, let us know how you enjoy your kingdom deliverance on today. Listen. Listen. to lose it. I'm about to lose it. Listen, we're going we gonna to come back to the uh, announcements in a few minutes. But I need Sister Carol. I need somebody to grab her and bring her up here. Somebody go get her by the hand and bring her up here. I'm about to lose it. Hold this. Sometimes when we get to the house of God, you never know what people need. And the truth of the matter is, some people come to church for a reason. Not to sit and spectate, not to look. Some people really need an authentic move of God. Sis, I'm just going to tell you that the devil didn't win this time. Not this time or any other time in the future. This situation that you just experienced, you thought it was supposed to snatch your son out of here. But God said, I'm drawing you closer to me. You thought it was for him. But God said, this is for you. Oh, God.
Pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. Come on. Grab what you need from them. Grab what you need from them. I speak strength to your total man. I speak to your heart. Strength to your mind. Hey! In the name of Jesus, we cancel the assignment of the devil right now in the name of Jesus. Say that you have no authority. You have no dominion here. Get off my family. Get off my son. Get off my mind. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak total victory now. In the name of Jesus. Victory in my walk. Victory in my talk. Victory in my mind. I speak victory. You got to understand that the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said that I've come that you might have life. So when you get home, you speak life to your son. I speak life. Somebody tell us, speak life. He shall not die. He shall not die. He shall not die. Somebody help us celebrate Jesus. Hey! Yes, sir. Oh, God. Every suicidal thought, every suicidal thought, we arrested in the name of Jesus. Woo! Come on, put your hands together. Somebody say, not on my watch. Not on my watch. If you got children in here, you got the enemy snatching in mind. I dare you to snatch it right back. Every suicidal thought. We come against it in the name of Jesus. Hey, God. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Suicide is real. Depression is real. And it's lingering in the house of God, but not on my watch. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. Am I my sister's keeper? Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So one goes through all of us. Oh, and through. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're moving right to the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 We cannot play with the enemy in 2022. He ain't playing with you. And if he is playing, he ain't playing fair. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we thank God for you. Amen. I come to take some stress off of her. You're going to go to sleep tonight. Hallelujah. Stop worrying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just two quick announcements. Amen. And we go prepare for the word of God. Amen. Next Sunday is our Shepherd's Care Sunday. Amen. And we're going to ask everybody, if you can and if you will, amen, join us, amen, as we honor our man of God. 
amen, with a financial $25 seed. Amen. We're going to ask that you prepare that, amen, quickly, amen, and on next Sunday. Amen. And let's come and be a blessing to our manservant who serves us very well. Amen. Amen. And on February 20th, amen, and Pastor will elaborate on this when he gets here, amen, is our sacrificial seed Sunday. Amen. And we're going to ask everybody, amen, to prepare a love gift again. Amen. And that sacrificial seed, amen, the increments of a 100, 200, and 250. Amen. And we want you to prepare now and put something away, amen, for February 20th. Amen. Put $20, $30 away, amen, so that you can have a seed to give to the house of the Lord on that day. It is word time in the kingdom of God. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm excited and I'm anxiously waiting to hear what the Lord has to say for me today. Amen. So we're going to ask everyone to stand if you can. Hallelujah. Those who can stand, please stand. Amen. And let's receive our pastor and our shepherd, Pastor William Craig Jr. Put your hands together for the man of God as he shall come feed you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is of the Lord's mercies that we haven't been consumed. And I'm grateful for life today. Tell somebody I'm grateful I'm alive. If we are honest about where we are and where we've been, what we've come through, the reality is that we don't deserve to be where we are. And so since God has been gracious enough to give us life, we should be gracious enough to thank him. So I want you to take two minutes and I just want you to open your mouth and I want you to worship the Lord right here. Whatever he's done for you, I want you to worship him for what he's done for you. You can't go off what he's done for nobody else but you should bless him for what he's done for you. God's been gracious to us. He's been kind. He's been wonderful. And God, we thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for always making a way out of no way. Father, when I wanted to give up, you wouldn't let me. When I wanted to die, you caused me to live. When I felt weak, you gave me strength. And so for that, I worship you. And for that, I praise you. If you're grateful to just have life, health, and strength, won't you do me a favor and clap your hands real loud and tell God thank you. have become so consumed with the major things that we forget the little things and it's the little things that make the major things we've become so worried about the future that we forgot to thank God for the present and I'm grateful that many have died with what you allowed me to live with and so for no other reason if you don't do another thing that's enough to give you glory I said some died with what you're living with right now. COVID killed people. You had a positive COVID test and you're still living. Somebody laid down last night with hopes of rising this morning and their bed became their cooling board. But when you woke up, you, could still have, you still had the activities of your limbs. You had the articulation of your speech. We should be grateful for just life life you may not have everything you want but thank god you didn't die in the thing you tried to keep oh have mercy Woo. i said you may not have everything you want but you ought to be grateful you didn't die in the thing you tried to keep you'll catch that by wednesday job chapter one job chapter one <sighs> 
Job chapter 1. Lord have mercy. Tell somebody I'm grateful I didn't die in the thing I tried to keep. <laughs> Kendra, there's some, I, now listen, I know there's some people that just, you know, they've been saved all their life. But there's some stuff I tried to keep that wasn't good for me, and I'm glad I didn't die in it. I'm glad I didn't die in the thing. I didn't die in it. Watch this. And a matter of fact, he gave me strength to come through the thing. And so for that, I'm grateful. For that, I'm grateful. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1 verse 20 says, Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped. Verse 21 says, And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. The blessed be the name of the Lord forever. And he said, verse 21, Naked I came from my mother's womb. And naked shall I return. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We appreciate you for these next few moments. I know it's like never before to preach your gospel. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shame. And the minutes of the year shall find me and find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. You are the master of my fate. You are the captain of my soul. We love you now and we give you praise. Execution is my desire. Humility is my standpoint. And I worship you today in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. Verse 21 says, And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. But blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Uh, tell your neighbor, the suffering strengthened me. The suffering strengthened me. Uh, Max Lucado says that sometimes God takes his time, but you will get through this. He said it won't be painless. It won't be quick. But God will use this mess for your good. He said, in the meantime, don't be foolish. Don't be naive or live in despair because with God's help, you will get through this. But then he says, let me be clear. You are a version of Joseph in your generation. He said, you represent a challenge to Satan's plan because you carry something of God within you. He said, you carry something noble. You carry something holy. And something this world needs. Wisdom, kindness, mercy, and skill. He said, but if Satan can neutralize you, then he can mute your influence. People of God, we all operate on our own time clock. And despite the fact that we know God doesn't operate in time, we still expect him to move when we think he should. Our time clock says when things should happen. And our time clock says how things should happen and, and the means by which they should happen. And then we say things like, I've sacrificed so God should have moved for me by now. Or I've been turning my plate down because I need God to move for me. I've been living clean so I know God is about to move for me. And I don't want to crush your dreams today, uh, but I want you to think uh, 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 that uh, uh, your sacrifice, your loyalty, and your accountability, as honorable as it is, uh, it does not exclude you from suffering. As faithful as you are, it does not exclude you from being disappointed. 
As anointed as you are, it does not exclude people from liking you for no reason. But if Romans 8.30 says, and those whom he predestined, he also called, and, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified, then we must step back for a moment and analyze exactly why suffering is a part of our life. Predestines mean that the fact that God has eternally chosen those who he intends to save. Called is God's personal or individual invitation to carry out a unique task he has for you. The justified is the act by which God moves a willing person, watch this, from the state of sin to the state of grace. And glorified is to give honor and praise to an individual. So if we put all of that together and look at Romans 8.30 again, then it should register to you like this. Those whom God has chosen and intends to save are also the ones by which he gave a unique task to. And the ones he gave a unique task to are also the ones he intends to move from sin to grace. And the ones he intends to move from sin to grace are also the ones he intends to give honor to. So in other words, when God predestined you in his mind, he would create you to understand the sin and understand the pain and understand that suffering was included and what we must do as believers is become more mature and understand that my victory is a byproduct of my ability to suffer. I don't get to a future without having some setbacks. I don't get to my next destiny avoiding the trouble of the enemy but the trouble of the enemy is not the enemy's doing. God is using the user to get you to the place that he wants you to occupy. And the only way that God can motivate some of us if it's he allows the enemy to get inside your things to cause you to become more focused. You should have opened that business by now, but you haven't done it because you're too fearful. But when the enemy it looks like the enemy is getting involved in it, then you'll sit down, you'll research more, and you'll push yourself past your limits. How is it that when the enemy comes to us, we'll put forth all the effort that we need, but when God presents something to us, we decide that we don't want to do it. But when God has a future for you, he will manipulate you with the one that thinks he's the master manipulator all to get you to destiny God has a way of using the enemy to get you on track God has a way of using the enemy to get your focus back. God has a way of using the enemy to draw you closer to him. And if the, this two years hasn't taught us anything, God is trying to draw his people closer to him. God is trying to get his people to understand that it's not about your gifting and it's not about your anointing. It's not about your calling. It's not about... How how anointed you are and how many dates you have and how busy your books are because God said if it wasn't for me there would be nothing on your books but God is trying to get you to understand that with all of that all I'm trying to get you to understand is I'm trying to pull you closer to me and I'm trying to get your attention if my people what you call by my name will humble themselves and, and pray and then and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He says, then will I hear from heaven and, and heal their sins and heal the land. God is trying to heal the land, but he can't get your attention. Your attention is so focused on who doesn't 
like you when your attention is so focused on who who doesn't support you can I say this to you you don't have no haters you know why because haters that's their problem that's not yours so stop focusing on something that's not going to move the needle but we need to be focused on God what do you say about me and what do you think about me and where am I in good standing with you God if you call me today am I ready am I doing what you told me to do are you pleased with my life are you pleased with the way I talk are you pleased with the way I treat people are you pleased with my prayer life are you pleased with my sacrifice are you pleased with my accountability tell somebody I want God to be pleased with me I want God to be pleased with me and what we must understand is that uh, uh, the suffering is not designed to kill you but the suffering was designed to build you. The suffering is designed to strengthen you. But the biggest thing is the suffering is designed to teach you the importance of obedience. Because before he can give you the victory, he has to see if he can trust you with the suffering. Before you can get the other part of it, he wants to see if your testimony will remain the same during the suffering. Before he he can bring you out. He wants to know, will you still speak well of me even when you're suffering? And what happens is when I'm made to trust the one who is destroying me, it forces me to focus on the prerequisite of what God ever called me to. And so if he knew me before I was formed, then that means everything I'm going through has to be by the design of God. God's hand and just because you don't like it and just because it doesn't feel good and just because it wasn't on your time clock it doesn't mean that it wasn't in the internal mind of God can I tell you this before he breathed breath in your body he knew what your mistakes was going to be he knew what your proclivity was going to be he knew the thing that was going to make you tick he knew the thing that was going to make you upset well on the other side of it he also knew that if he could get you to, to understand who he was then the thing that made you tick he could deliver you from the person that made you upset he could get you away from him at the end of the day God makes no mistakes and he does not error and even the things that don't feel good are still designed by God given by God and and implicated by God I wish you would look at somebody to, and tell them this ain't the enemy to, this is God testing me yeah. Yeah. God is God is testing you to see if he can trust you when things go wrong and how ironic is it that we are in the book of Job and many of us know the story of Job but I want to walk you through how amazing it is that after everything that he experiences his testimony is that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away but, but he says despite all of that blessed be the name of the Lord forever and so in order for 20 and 21 to make sense I gotta go back to verse 1 and walk you through the story so you understand because some of you will be able to identify I don't understand why I'm still raising my hands when everything is going wrong but when you understand who God is you're able to say blessed be the name of the Lord when your heart is broken you're able to say blessed be the name of the Lord when your mind is worn you're able to say blessed be the name of the Lord when you feel like you're losing everything around you. And so if we look at verses 1 through 3, the Bible will record that Job was blameless. He was upright. He feared God and he shunned evil. He had seven sons and he had three daughters. He had 7,000 sheep. He had 3,000 camel. He had 500 oxen and donkey and a large number of servants. And so scripture considered 
declared him the greatest man among all the people in the east. And sometimes we want to be called great, but we should consider what comes with being great. Sometimes we want to be known as the one that's trending right now, but you got to be careful because you don't know what comes with that. Sometimes we want to be the one that's considered. Help me. But you got to be careful when you want to be the one that's considered. I know you want your name in lights, but it's a price that comes with that. And this price ain't got nothing to do with the enemy. This got everything to do with God because God wants to see if I put you on top, can I trust you to still worship me? And if I take it all away, can you still worship me? Tell somebody, be careful what you ask for. Be careful. Careful what you ask for. Scripture considered him the greatest man among all people in the East. And when you when you're great, people will not like you for no reason. When you are great, people will refuse to support you. When you are great, you become a target for no reason. And so what we see in verses 1 through 3 is God sets the stage showing you who he is. And out of all of the things that he had, out of all of the sheep that he had, outside of all the camels that he had, outside of all of the oxen and donkeys, outside of all of the servants that he had. God didn't begin the scripture with that. He began the scripture with a character analysis. He said Job is blameless. Job is upright. Job fears God and Job shuns evil. Can I ask you this? If God pulled your character analysis today, what would be the qualities that he says about Will he say you're nothing but a complainer? Or will he say I can trust them because they're accountable? Will he say that they can't be trusted when nobody is watching them? Or can he say I can trust them with anything? My question to you today, are you worried about what people think about you? Or are you worried about what God says? People will always have their opinion of you. And it doesn't matter what you do, uh, Riley, in some people's eyes, you're just never going to be good enough. In some people's eyes, they're always going to have an issue with something. In some people's eyes, they will never forgive you for the mistake that you made. In some people's eyes, you will always be the thing that you failed to. But I came to talk to some people today that can say, I've taken a long look in the mirror and you can say what you want about me behind closed doors but when I stand before God I know God is pleased with my try I know God is pleased with my effort I ain't say I always did it right but when I look at God God is pleased with my effort is God pleased with you is God pleased with your try and let me qualify this your try is not an excuse to continue to fall because God can help you with your weakness but God will not tolerate your wickedness and I don't want nobody around me that's going to let me do whatever I want to do you should be scared if you're the biggest one in your circle because that's not no circle that's a cage and can't nobody check you and can't nobody call you out I'm afraid of people that can justify everything that they do and everything that they say and every decision they make is always justified by something but I need somebody that will stand next to me and say get yourself together you can't act like that you can't talk like that now that we cling to it. and what we are doing now is enabling people to be worse than what they were what we're doing now is enabling people and we give them a word 
that makes them comfortable. And we prophesy things to them that makes them comfortable. And we say things to them that motivate them to remain where they are, to never grow. Also, you can use them for what you want to get out of them. But I want to know, is there anybody here today that can say, don't tell me anything because you think I'm going somewhere. I'm not going nowhere. I want you to pull my coattail. I want you to tell me when I'm wrong. I want you to show me how to be better. Why? Because I want God to be pleased. And so now what we're doing is we're watering down our messages because we want people to remain. And we're prophesying to people that got nasty spirits. And we're prophesying to people that don't know how to talk to people. And what we're doing is we're raising a generation to rebel against the truth. We, 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 we love the houses and cars. But you know what we don't like no more? is when people talk to you about your attitude we love to hear about promotion but we don't like to be corrected we like to hear that God gonna do it God gonna do it but he not gonna do it until you apologize he not gonna do it until you get it right he not gonna do it until you accept accountability and you can jump and shout you can speak in tongues you can roll on the floor and you can run around the church bodily exercise exercise profit of little and ain't none of that gonna fix the fact that you gotta get yourself together gotta get yourself together and now is the time that you lean on the one next to you and say listen I need you to hold me accountable and if you see me leaning to the left then pull me back to the right if you see me leaning to the right then pull me back to the left if my attitude needs to change then call me on it. Don't 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 co-sign my stuff. If that was wrong, then pull me away and say, listen, as upset as you are, that was wrong. Even if I feel justified in my communication, pull me to the side and say, be careful how you approach people. Because you want to make sure, as right as you think you are, people still deserve to be respected. We're losing respect. We're losing dignity. And we're losing honor. Because we got a spirit of who going to check me. But I got a word from glory today. Thank you. And you ain't got to worry about me saying another thing. But when God checks you, you going to wish I checked you. You got to get people around you people around you my plea today is get people around you that want to see you better but see you better the right way you can't tell me you want to see me better and all you do is feed my bitterness you can't tell me you want me to be better and all you do is feed my brokenness oh don't worry about it it's going to be alright you know God going to get them no 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 get away from me with that tell me to get myself together to fix your face and when you get in church lift your hands open your mouth and thank God for life yeah. Yeah. We have now put people around us that cushion our foolishness we now get people around us that okay our madness because I'm going to say what I need to say. Well, baby, let me tell you in this season, 
Be very careful what you say and how you say it. Because I'm not going to say nothing back to you. I'm going to let God deal with you. The years of going back and forth, those days are over. I will close my mouth and I will let God deal with you. Because wisdom tells me even a fool knows when to be silent. And there are some conversations you need to stop engaging in. There are some text messages you need to stop responding to it and say listen at the end of the day I'm going to let God handle all of this. Is there anybody here that can say I'm going to stop responding? I'm going to stop explaining myself? I'm going to let God deal with it. Because if you get caught up in the thing then you will miss what God is trying to get you to understand. Well, Pastor, why did you say that? Because if you go down a little further, I'm still in the book. I'm in the book today. I just want to lay the foundation so the story makes sense to you. See, because you can't get the double unless you're willing to embrace the trouble that's before you. The only reason why Job, uh, Moses, I feel him early today. The only reason why Job was able to see the double of it is because when the trouble came, he knew how to respond. His own wife looked at him and said, this the God that you serve, the one that took your cattle away, the one that allowed our house to burn down, the one that caused our children to die, this is the God that you want me to serve and the book says that she looked at him and said you, you need to curse this God and we just need to die together but what I love about Job is despite what he was going through he remembered what God brought him through and he said woman you sound foolish you don't sound like my wife gotta have the right people around you and, and you gotta know who's around you and you gotta make sure that the people around you know how to tell you when things are off you gotta make sure that the people that you got around you know how to pull you back when you're going too far you gotta make sure that the people around you don't pull you from your destiny trying to get you to, to focus on the thing before I know where I came from and I know what they said about me and I'm going to ask you to stop bringing me that because I don't need that no more because the only thing now that I'm worried about is is God pleased with the thing that he got for me to do is God pleased with the task that he has designed for me is God pleased with my response when they came to me is God pleased with how I handled it is God pleased with how I removed it is God pleased with the way that I answered is God pleased with my attitude is God pleased with my mindset is God pleased with my outlook because at the end of the day what they say is their opinion but what God says matters to me and if he pulls my character analysis I want him to say as frustrated as he was he handled it the right way even when he failed he had enough respect and integrity to handle it the right way I don't want to hear he was a great preacher I don't want to hear he was an awesome pastor I want to hear that God is pleased with the way that I walk 
with the way that I talk with the way that I handle his people and if by chance God decides to give me a future I want to make sure that I'm in good standing to handle it I want to make sure that this move ain't short term it might have hurt but I handled it well it might have made me cry but I handled it well they might have lied but I handled it well it might have crushed you but I handled it well they might have been disloyal but I handled it well I might have been confused but I handled it well knowing that if God before me then who can be against me Bible says that now Satan has a conversation yes with the Lord and he asks him can I touch this one because I know if I touch him he'll curse you right in your face and God with his awesome self God with his omniscient self God with his wise self God with his powerful self looks down at Satan and he says Job the one I said is blameless Job the one that I said is upright Job the one that fears me Job the one that shuns evil is the one that you think is gonna turn on me let me tell you this when God can trust you with trouble he will brag on you in the face of the enemy and I know that the enemy feels he's gonna get you to quit but God with his wise self is taking you through all of this because God's been bragging on you God's been talking about you God has thrown you in the enemy's face Come on, boys, let's go. And the Bible said that God looked at Satan and said, You can do whatever you want, but you can't touch his body. You can take his cattle. You can take his money. You can take his children. And Job will still speak well of me. In verse 14, a man came and said that all your servants have been killed. In verse 16, a man came and said all of your cattle have been killed. In verse 17, a man came and said your house have been burnt to the ground. In verse 18, a man came and said all your children have died in the fire. But in verse 20, Job said you told me everything you wanted to tell me and now in verse 21 I'm going to tell you something the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away but bless it bless it bless it
Job said, you done told me everything that you wanted to tell me. But now I'm going to tell you this thing. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. But I will remember the name of the Lord. Job said, you told me, but now I'm going to tell you who shall ascend upon the mountain and who shall be seated upon the hills. It is he that have clean hands. requires you to learn God on a different level. That's why it's important that you have the right people around you because they will mistake your suffering as the enemy and give you something that pulls you out the process. And then years later, you come around and you're in the same circle. Why? Because you thought it was the enemy, but it was actually God. But you need people that are spiritually sound. When you come to them and say how broken you are, I know you're broken, but God is the mender of broken hearts. I'm so overwhelmed. He, the scripture told me when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Well, I don't know what I'm going to say. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Well, who is going to help me through all this? Well, who is the king of glory? He's the Lord God, strong and mighty. He's the Lord God. I can't lift my head up. Lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. And God, you gotta have, you gotta have a response for everything. You gotta have a response. And if you aren't sure who God is to you, then you won't be sure what God can do for you. If you're not sure who God is directly to you as a source, then you'll never understand what God can do for you when things get low. Scripture said, that he lost everything. Everything. Scripture didn't say that Job was a man that was faulty. Job was a man with bad character. Job 1 opens saying, and God was pleased. You know you really called by God when he'll be pleased with you and still make you suffer. You 
want to know if you're really called by God? Be pleasing in his sight and still be able to suffer. And Job's example was great. Why? Because God knew he could count on him. If you look at the conversation in verses 8 through 12, I'm still in the book. If you look 8 through 12, Satan approaches God. And he says to him, I've been, God said, where you been? God asked Satan, where you been? He said, I've been going to and fro. Seeking whom I can get. He said, but it's one, it's one I can't get to. He said, because you got a hedge around him. Watch this. He said, but 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 if you remove the hedge, watch this, watch the text, watch the text. He doesn't say, and let me destroy his stuff. Watch how tricky and manipulative Satan is. The text says that Satan said to God, remove the hedge and you destroy all his stuff. <laughs> and God says, I created you, dummy. So what makes you think you're going to fool me? So you got to be careful who you're listening to. Because people will manipulate you to think they're for you and they're really trying to use you. So, so Satan says, he says to God, he says, remove the hedge and you touch it. God said, no, nah, I remove the hedge and you can destroy it. He said, really? He said, I guarantee you, if you remove that hedge, he'll curse you to your face. And God responded, he's blameless. He's upright. He fears me, and he shuns idiots like you. You can touch his stuff, but you can't touch him. Watch this. You're so anointed that God will allow the enemy to destroy your stuff and not have access to touch you. This is why I say all the time, the enemy's power is very minute. Very minute. How? I can prove it right here. He had to ask permission to even touch him. So if you're that, how powerful can you be if you need permission to do something? God doesn't need permission to do anything. He's sovereign. He does what he wants, when he wants, whenever he wants, to whoever he wants, however he decides to do it. But we've given our life to an enemy that don't have authority to touch you. Your things are gone, so what? Your relationship didn't work out, so what? You didn't get the job you wanted. So what? I thought this was going to last. It didn't. So what? My question is, what do you do when God takes it all away? What do you do when he takes the thing that you love? And gives you no explanation for it. And he only tells you, I'm God, you gotta trust me. What do you do when you've given your life to something? And you feel like you've wasted your time and you have nothing to show for it. And God tells you, it was me. I did that. Well, God, why you didn't show me? I did. You just didn't believe me. And so since you didn't believe me, then I let you go through it. And there are some things God not going to show you. Why? Because you got to learn the lesson. Everything that you experience is not because God is angry with you. God wasn't angry with Job. He had a conversation with the enemy. And he had to prove to the enemy, I moved the chess pieces on this board. Some of you have been wondering, 
Why are you going through? That's because God had a conversation with the enemy concerning you. And the enemy wanted to know, can I touch their stuff? And God gave them permission. But I came to tell you today, God is dependent on you to still speak well of him so he can prove the enemy wrong one more time. I wish you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to suffer well and I'm going to trust God until he bring me out because what's on the other side is better than what I have. What's on the other side is better than what I have. What's on the other side of this is better than what I have. The other side of it is better than what I had. And let me say this to you, and I want y'all to, Lord have mercy. I want y'all to hear me today. Do not put yourself around people that cannot challenge you. Listen to me. Do not put yourself in the company of people that cannot challenge you. If they can't tell you you're wrong, then don't be around them. If they can't call you on your stuff and you not get offended, don't be around them. You need accountable people and an uncountable time because God is counting on you. I'll say it again. You need accountable people in an uncountable time because God is counting on you. And the only way that you're going to fulfill what God expects of you is if you got people around you that will say, No, nah, Nisi, you're wrong for how you said that. Eddie, no, you cannot talk to people like that. You cannot do that. It's not acceptable, it's not right, and it's not God. And when we can do these things, and still have a gen see because here's the thing you know what people say you know I know you might not want to hear it you know but I'm saying it because I love you if you're around me I'm not saying that I said it I meant it and I don't care if you don't like it because you're going to be better for it I'm not apologizing for the truth I don't care if you don't like it I said it because you need to hear it and you're going to be better for it And you can be mad with me on Friday, but on Sunday when we come, we're going to give God praise. Why? Because you made it over. You got Friday and Saturday to get it out your system. Because when Sunday comes, we're going to give God praise knowing I didn't like it, but it was good for me. of suffering and if I'm gonna carry mine well then you gonna carry yours well fix your face lift your hands open your mouth and tell God thank you we have we have become so weak because we don't understand suffering 
we become so feeble because we don't understand suffering. But what God is trying to get everybody to understand in this season is suffering is on my agenda. So stop asking me to remove something I'm taking you through. God said, this, the enemy don't have nothing to do with this. I'm using him to get your attention. But I am the orchestrator of this. And we must submit to where God has us. You know why? Because when you come out, somebody else will go through. And they will depend on you to say, I've been there. But let me tell you what I did. I suffered well when I didn't understand. What you see now is the end result. But what I went through to get that is I had to suffer. Stop saying, God, bring me out. And say, God, bring me through it. I want to come through it all. Once I come through it, then I get everything that I need. Tell your neighbor, you can be as emotional as you want. But you're going to suffer this out so we can see the victory. I said, tell your neighbor, you can be as emotional as you want. But this season, you're going to suffer out. You're going to suffer out so we can see the victory. Clap your hands if you love the Lord today. For what he's done and for all the ways that he's made. I'm excited for what the Lord is doing. I'm excited for where he is taking us. And I am excited for what this next phase of ministry is going to look like. And it's going to look, it's going to look amazing. I can't share it with you. But just know God is working on something right now. God is working on something. If you never prayed before, I need you to pray now. God is working on our behalf. God is working on our behalf. And I, I, I had to, the Lord brought something to my mind this morning. When Elder Alexander was here, he said that God would put me in the presence of a man from a different nationality that wasn't from here. Y'all remember that? He said, God's, God's getting ready to give you a new building. He said, and the man is not going to be from here. But he's going to give you favor. That's all I can say to you. I had a conversation with a man. That's all I can say. And he's not from here. That's all I can tell you. I can't tell you nothing else. Don't ask me. Pastor, I can't tell you nothing. But I had a conversation with a man and he ain't from here. He ain't from Ooh. Key, that thing hit me when I got in the car. It all me I'm telling you. Y'all find him. Wherever he is, just go with him. Go with him. Whatever he is. Wherever he is. He ain't from here. He ain't from here. That's all I can tell you. That's all I can tell you. From here, that's all I can tell you. Conversation today, Riley, with a man that's not from here. That was the word of the Lord, and it came back very precise. As a matter of fact, he led the conversation with Pastor. It's nice to meet you. I am from, and it didn't even make sense. I said, "Oh, that's interesting." 
And when I got in the car, the Lord said, I told you my word is still good. He said, and although you can't see what I'm doing, he said, I'm still working on what I said I was going to do. And I said, wow, a word so precise in such an uncertain time. But that's how the Lord does. He's going to give it to you just like he said. Press down, shaking together, and running over. I said, press down, shaking together, and running over. So if you want to know why he dancing, that's why he dancing. It's the authenticity of the word that came. He said, a man that is not from here. He said, pastor, you're going to find favor with him. So I said to him, I said to him, I said, when I was having a conversation, I asked some questions I need to ask. Look at y'all, Pastor, what you say? None of your business. When I had the conversation, I asked my questions. And he said to me, Pastor, get your plan together. He said, everything is negotiable. He said, he said this is what I have in my mind. He said, but you and your team, get your stuff together. He said, and then y'all send me what y'all thinking. He said, because I want to help y'all. He said, I, he said, I want to help y'all. I want to help y'all. God is sending help to the helper. I said, God is sending help to the helper. He said, I want to help y'all. So I'm just believing God. I'm believing God. We're going to take our time, and I'm going to work with the team, and I just want you to pray. And the only prayer I want you to say is, Lord, give my pastor favor. That's all I want you to say. Say, Lord, give my pastor favor. That's all I need you to pray. Give me favor. And I believe that God's going to do it just like he said. I believe he's going to do it just like he said. I believe you're gonna do it just like you said. Lord, give a favor. Listen, I don't need money. I just need favor. Favor will take me where money can. I just need favor. Just let me get my foot through the door, and God will handle the rest of it. And I believe it. That He's gonna do just like He said. I am excited today. I am excited today because the Lord continues to show signs that he is with us and he is with me. And you guys know I am very, I am very untraditional when it comes to joining the church. Many of you have joined by text message or conversation on the phone. Many of you have joined that way. But I'm excited today because we have a new member amongst us. Brother Martez, won't you stand up for us? Stand up. Stay back there, stay back there, stay back there. I am proud to, I am proud to be your pastor. I am excited to lead you. I'm going to stick to my promise. I said, I'll give you to the middle of the year. I'll give you to the middle of the year. But we got some stuff we got to work on. I want you to start mapping it out now. You hear me? Start mapping about now. And what I loved about it is I did my random checks as I do. I just texted him to check on him. And he said, Pastor, I think it's time that I make it official. I said, well, you can do one or two things. You can stand up in front of the church, or we can make it official now. He said, well, I'm just going to make it official now. But I am excited to have you. I am excited that you are here. God has given us another Oh! I said, God has, God has given us one more. God has given us one more. I say 
God has given us one more. They're coming. You hear me? They're coming. They're coming. One by one. They're coming one by one. I said they're coming one by one. Yes. One by one, I said, God, don't send them one by one. I said, one by one, He gonna send them one by one. One by one. I'm praying for you. You hear me? I'm praying for you. And what's funny is she saw the message go out that only members could come. And she sent me a message, Lamika. She said, oh, well, I guess I'm going to have to join the church then. I said, you can come. You always say you can come. She said, you ain't going to leave me out on this wave. She said, you ain't gonna. She said, you ain't gonna leave me out of this way. I'm not gonna miss this way. Leave me out of this way. That's tough. Help. You're not gonna leave me out of this one. I missed the last one. You ain't gonna leave me out of this one. Yes, sir. You're not gonna leave me out of this one.
next one. I missed the last one. I'm not missing this one. Thank you, Lord. Come on, boys, we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Listen, let's be a bl- Bri, I'm not missing this one. I want you to hear me. Don't you miss this one. God is changing everything in your life. Everything in your life. He's strengthening the weak areas. He's going to right some wrongs for you. But what God is showing you in this season is I am for you. Because you were willing to suffer when you didn't understand. But God said this is the season of the life that you've been praying about, asking me about. God said, don't you miss it this time. God said, and if you wanted to know, God, is this thing for me? God said, it is for you. And I sent it your way. God said, I sent it your way. We got to go. Let's be a blessing.
Y'all really ready? Y'all really ready? We can do it if you're really ready. I say, we can do it if you're really ready. Ask your neighbor, are you really ready? Ask them, say, say, hey, are you really ready? We can do it if you're really ready. Lord, have mercy. Listen, I want to read this to you. Y'all come down just a little bit. I want to read this to you. I just got a message. I just got a message. I want to read this to you. I just got a text message that came through my phone. It said, hey, pastor. So this is what I need to say. And that is that I love you and I just need you to correct me when you know I am wrong and lead and guide me through my next step with guidance of God. So whatever you need me to do, I am submitting to your directions from this day forward. I shall follow you wholeheartedly. So whatever you need me to do in the kingdom, I am a willing vessel. I have sat too long and now I must move. Thank you for all you do and all you have done. But this is the part I love. She said, God has let me know that I can trust you. And you are not here to use me, misguide me, and I will trust him and his word. My question earlier was, when God pulls your resume, what will he say about you? What will he say about you? Can God tell the people that he trusts you. What does God say about your resume? God is sending them. God is sending them. Watch this. He's sending them in and raising up the ones that's already here. He's sending them in and raising up the ones that's already here. It's time to go. We got work to do. We've been here too long. We got, I'm not talking about a building, I'm talking about ministry. We've been here too long. It's time to move to the next phase. And God is sending them one by one. I just want to know, are you ready? Are you ready? You got to get ready for ministry. Listen, let's be a blessing today. Let's be a blessing. I asked, I asked if 10 people would join me today with a $30 seed. I asked if 10 people, if you're watching virtually, if you can join us today. If you're watching virtually, if you will join us with a $30 seed. If you're watching virtually, join us with a $30 seed today. But if you're here in the building and you have a $30 seed, stand to your feet so I can see you today. I want to count. I see you one. That's two. That's three. That's four. Come on. That's five. Come on. I see you. I see you. Come on. A $30 seed today. $30 seed. Six. Come on. I see you giving today. Come on. I see you giving today. If you're watching us virtually, KDT, if you're not here in your home, let me know you're sending that $30 seed. You can just put it in the comments. Just type done in the comments for me so I know you're giving. Just type done in the comments for me. Everybody else, get the best gift that you have. Get the very best gift that you have. Get the very best gift that you have. And I want you to bring it. I want you to bring it. If you're giving via... Uh, cash app electronically just wave your phone at me so I know wave your phone at me so I know I see you 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 Jonica the Lord kept his hand on your son to prove to you that he was still for you God said, I took you through it because I wanted to see if you would trust me. And sometimes God has to use one of your own as a sacrificial lamb to see if you can trust me. He wanted to know, could he trust me? In the Old Testament, he took his son up to the mountain to kill him. And when God knew that he would do it, he said, look over to the left. And there was a ram in the bush to offer the sacrifice. God took your son because he wanted to see, would you still love me if I decided to take him? 
And God said, because you trusted me when you didn't understand, not only am I going to restore him, but I'm getting ready to restore your whole family. You hold on to God. Let go of the past and hold on to God. We thank the Lord today. Y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead. We thank the Lord today. We thank the Lord today. Tell somebody, I'm going on to the next phase of this. Tell somebody, I'm going on to the next phase of this. Listen, come on, Riley, you come on. Listen, uh, come on, Riley, come on. Listen, I need you to do me a favor, Renee. No, y'all stay there. Renee, I need you to do me a favor. I just need a good 30 seconds. God said, God said, you've been praying in secret. God said, you thought I forgot about you. He said, you see everybody else getting blessed. And God said, I see you at the bottom of the mountain saying, hey, what about me? God said, you've been happy for everybody else. He said, but you didn't even have enough strength to wipe your own tears. He said, but if you praise me today like it's already done. He said, by next week, I'm going to give you a sign that I'm for you. God said, all you got to do is give me your best praise right now. And if you believe it for your sister, then give God praise with your sister. victory all week long and it goes according to your faith so if you believe there will be victory there will be what you believe and I believe that all week long that the Lord is going to give us a victorious week and whatever you going through just remember that the battle is not ours the battle is the Lord's. And all we have to do is give it all over to him. And he'll continue to see us through. Standing all over the sanctuary. Let's continue to pray for our pastor. That the Lord continues to favor and strengthen him. Throughout his week. Let's continue to pray for our ministerial staff as we hold them up as well and be his strength and his weakness. And I pray that all week long that the Lord comes to see about your households. I pray that all week long the Lord gives you victory. We thank you for the move of God today, and we thank God for his presence. We all not take his presence for granted. Amen, KDT? I said we all not take his presence for granted because God doesn't show up everywhere. But thanks be to God that he shows up every week at Kingdom Deliverance Tabernacle. Amen. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your move today. God, we ask as we leave this place, but never your presence, that you go with us to our separate destinations, God. Let your blood be the covering and the covering be the blood. Keep a hedge of protection all around us 
and keep us from danger seen and unseen. And Father, as we go throughout our week, we ask that you continue to give us the victory and help us to know that we are undefeated because we serve the greatest power. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you and we thank you. And until we praise you, until we praise you all over again next week, we ask that you keep us, keep our minds and keep our bodies. In Jesus' name, continue to cover our pastor. Continue to touch his mind, keep his mind. Cover him emotionally, cover him spiritually, and cover him physically. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we do pray. And let the church say amen. And amen again. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.